Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Wanderlust Whispers, the podcast where we talk all things travel. I'm Sarah, your host for today, and joining me is my best friend and fellow travel enthusiast, Mark. How are you, Mark? Hey, Sarah. I'm doing great. Excited to dive into some travel stories and tips with you today. It's been a while since our last chat. Absolutely. There's so much to cover. So where should we start? How about we talk about our favorite travel destinations first? That sounds perfect. Do you want to go first or should I? Go ahead, Mark. I'm curious to hear about your all-time favorite destination. All right, if I have to pick one, I'd say Japan. There's something magical about the blend of ancient traditions and cutting-edge modernity. Walking through the streets of Tokyo, you can see a high-tech skyscraper right next to a centuries-old temple. Japan is incredible. I remember my trip to Kyoto, the temples, the gardens, the food. Everything was just so serene and beautiful. What's your favorite memory from Japan? It has to be my time in the countryside, particularly in the town of Takayama. It's a small, picturesque town nestled in the Japanese Alps. I went during the spring festival, and it was amazing to see the traditional floats and the vibrant atmosphere. Plus, the local sake was out of this world. Oh, that sounds amazing. I didn't get a chance to visit Takayama, but it's definitely on my list for next time. For me, one of my favorite destinations has to be Italy. Every city has its own unique charm, but Florence really stole my heart. Florence is beautiful. The art, the architecture, and of course, the food. What did you love most about Florence? It's hard to pick just one thing, but I'd say the art. The Uffizi Gallery, the Statue of David, and all the incredible Renaissance art just blew me away. I spent hours wandering around, soaking it all in. And then there's the food. I had the best gelato of my life there. Italian gelato is on another level. Speaking of food, What's your take on trying local cuisines when traveling? Are you adventurous with it? Definitely. I think trying local food is such an important part of the travel experience. It gives you a deeper connection to the culture. I always make it a point to try something new and different. How about you? Same here. I love exploring local cuisines. One of the best experiences I had was in Thailand, taking a cooking class in Chiang Mai. Learning to cook traditional Thai dishes and then enjoying the feast was unforgettable. That sounds incredible. I did a similar cooking class in Vietnam, and it was so much fun. The fresh ingredients and the vibrant flavors were amazing. Cooking classes are such a great way to immerse yourself in the local culture. Absolutely. Speaking of immersing in the culture, have you ever tried staying with a local family during your travels? Yes, I have. I did a homestay in Peru in a small village in the Sacred Valley. It was such a humbling experience. The family was so welcoming. And I got to learn so much about their daily lives and traditions. Have you tried a homestay? I have in Morocco. Staying with a Berber family in the Atlas Mountains was eye-opening. They were incredibly hospitable. And it was fascinating to see their way of life and learn about their culture. That's amazing. It's experiences like these that make traveling so enriching. Absolutely. So what's next on your travel bucket list, Sarah? I've been dreaming about visiting New Zealand. The landscapes look absolutely breathtaking. And there's so much adventure to be had. What about you, Mark? New Zealand is on my list, too. But my next dream destination is Iceland. The natural beauty there is just stunning. From the geysers to the waterfalls and the northern lights, I can't wait to explore it all. Iceland looks incredible. The natural scenery there is like something out of a fairy tale. Exactly. It's amazing how travel can open our eyes to the beauty and diversity of our world. It truly is. Traveling is such a privilege, and it's wonderful to be able to share these experiences and tips with our listeners. Definitely. And speaking of tips, should we share some of our best travel hacks with our audience? Great idea. Let's do it. All right. I'll go first. One of my top tips is to always carry a portable charger. It's a lifesaver when you're out exploring all day and your phone battery is running low. How about you, Sarah? That's a good one. My tip would be to always learn a few basic phrases in the local language. Even just knowing how to say hello, thank you, and please can go a long way in connecting with locals and showing respect for their culture. Absolutely. It shows that you're making an effort and people really appreciate it. Another tip I have is to make copies of important documents like your passport and keep them in different places. It's better to be safe than sorry. That's very practical. I'd add packing a small first aid kit to the list. It's always better to have some basic medical supplies on hand, just in case. So true. Packing light gives you so much more freedom. Another tip I love is to use apps to find local events and activities. They're a great way to discover hidden gems and experience the local culture. That's a good one. 
And speaking of apps, using public transportation apps can save you a lot of time and hassle in figuring out how to get around in a new city. Yes, public transportation apps are a game changer. And don't forget to take lots of photos, but also take the time to put your phone away and just enjoy the moment. Exactly. It's all about finding that balance. Well, I think we've covered a lot today. Any final thoughts, Sarah? Just that I hope our listeners feel inspired to travel and explore new places. It's such a rewarding experience, and there's always something new to learn and discover. Today we're diving into some travel-related questions that we've received from our listeners. Ready, Sarah? Absolutely, Mark. Let's get started. What's our first question? Our first question comes from Emma in New York. She asks, what are your top tips for traveling on a budget? Great question, Emma. Traveling on a budget can be a bit challenging, but definitely doable. My first tip is to be flexible with your travel dates. Flights and accommodations can be significantly cheaper during off-peak times. Also, consider using budget airlines and staying in hostels or Airbnb accommodations instead of hotels. What about you, Mark? Those are excellent tips, Sarah. I'd add that planning and researching can save you a lot of money. Look for free activities and attractions in your destination. Many cities have free walking tours, and museums often have discounted or free entry days. Also, try to eat like a local. Street food and local markets can be much cheaper than restaurants. Absolutely. And don't forget to use public transportation instead of taxis. It's much cheaper and gives you a more authentic experience of the place you're visiting. Great tips. Our next question is from Raj in Mumbai. He asks, how do you handle travel fatigue and jet lag? Ah, travel fatigue and jet lag can really put a damper on your trip. My advice is to stay hydrated and avoid alcohol and caffeine on long flights. Once you arrive, try to adapt to the local time as quickly as possible by staying awake until a reasonable local bedtime. If you need a nap, keep it short, no longer than 20, 30 minutes. Definitely. I also recommend getting some sunlight once you arrive. Natural light helps reset your internal clock. Exercise can also help. Take a walk or do some light stretching to get your blood flowing. Good points, Mark. Our next question comes from Laura in Sydney. She asks, what are your must-have items when packing for a trip? Great question, Laura. For me, some must-have items include a portable charger, a reusable water bottle, and a universal adapter. Also, I always pack a small first aid kit with essentials like band-aids, pain relievers, and any prescription medications I might need. How about you, Sarah? Those are all great items. I'd add a travel pillow for those long flights or bus rides, a lightweight and quick-drying towel, and a power bank. I also always bring copies of important documents like my passport and travel insurance, just in case. Very practical, Mark. Our next question is from Carlos in Mexico City. He asks, how do you stay safe while traveling? Safety is so important when traveling. One tip is to always stay aware of your surroundings and trust your instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. Also, avoid displaying expensive items like jewelry and keep your valuables in a secure place. What do you think, Mark? Absolutely, Sarah. I'd also say it's crucial to have a plan for emergencies. Know the local emergency numbers, have a copy of your important documents, and let someone know your itinerary. Additionally, avoid walking alone at night in unfamiliar places and try to blend in as much as possible to avoid drawing attention. Very sound advice, Mark. Our last question for today is from Nina in London. She asks, what's the best way to meet people and make friends while traveling? Great question, Nina. One of the best ways to meet people is to stay in hostels. They often have common areas and organized activities that make it easy to meet fellow travelers. Joining local tours and taking part in group activities like cooking classes or walking tours are also great ways to connect with people. Definitely. Another way is to use social media and travel apps designed for meeting other travelers. Apps like Meetup can help you find events and activities in your area. Don't be afraid to strike up a conversation with locals, too. They often have the best tips and can become lifelong friends. Absolutely. Traveling is as much about the people you meet as the places you see. Thanks for the wonderful questions, everyone. That's all the time we have for today's Q&A session. Yes, thanks for sending in your questions. We hope you found our answers helpful. Until next time, happy travels.